Well, when I when I first hurt my knee, I uh, I walked off the ground. It wasn't too bad, and uh, I was in the paper as a bruised knee. I uh, tried to train the next week, tried to get up against Geelong. It was just before the finals, and we're all pretty happy at that stage. We were looking forward to a big final series, and uh, I went out training and just went for a few marks, and it was just no good. So I, I went in. I was a little bit disappointed about missing the final series, but it re really didn't hit me until I uh, went into hospital and uh, they said the anterior cruise is gone. And, and then, oh, well, I said, uh, I'll be out for a year or so. But uh, at that stage, all the medical people were fairly optimistic that I might get back in six or seven months because it had done, uh, apparently, rolling or someone else had done it before. So for the first injury, I thought, oh, well, six, seven months and I'll be back in it again. Three and a half year later, three and a half years later, I'm... I was still waiting on that six months. Well, there must have been a string of lows. What was the lowest you got? The lowest I got uh, was probably two lows when we lost our first grand final. That was real low for me. Um, I wasn't playing or anything, but I, you know, I felt low. The club was low and I was low. And uh, probably personally, uh, the biggest low was uh, just last year when. Uh, after the two operations and then I did a cartilage at the start of the year so I kept building up for the end of the year like because we're having a successful year and uh, I was working my butt off trying to get back into it and then uh, about three quarters of the way through the year in another comeback down at the Lake Oval I dislocated my uh, shoulder and uh, that was a, that was probably the lowest I, I got. Well, did you ever feel like just chucking it in? Well, at that stage, that stage, I uh, the only time I actually thought about it was when I was I was ga I went off to hospital and, and the shoulder was still out of place and just sitting there waiting for someone to put it back in. And uh, Terry was great. He was he was uh, he come and pick me up and I was back in. I, I sort of stood in all my gear and I got in the car and so I looked out the window. I said, "I'll oh, this." I said, uh, "You know, on the way home, I said." You know, I don't think I'll come up after this, but, you know, I was spent a day or so feeling sorry for myself, but after that I was back in there again. It's hard to imagine Danaher enjoying highs from football over the last three and three quarter years. But what of Essendon's finest moment in two decades? Did Neil share the joy or fight back the tears of frustration at what might have been, as his brother, who succeeded him to the Essendon captaincy, took the prize? I was elated. A lot of relief too because we'd worked so hard we'd uh, we'd built up a, a good side and uh, we won that night competition a couple of times and then we lost a day yes. grand final the year before and then we worked hard again and uh, it was a real relief that it was rewarded last year and uh, I was very happy for Terry I, I, I didn't feel uh, I was really part of it because I um, I wasn't around the club all that much. I was sort of training on my own and uh, I was really happy for the club and for the players and uh, no bitterness, no. Within the ranks, was there sympathy towards you over that type of thing, that success that you couldn't quite share? Oh, no doubt. No doubt that that would have been the case. There would have been sympathy for other players too. Bahaja, Carey, Salmon, of course, he hurt his knee. They all missed out, and it uh, wasn't only me, it would have been other players that missed out. You can only, only play 20. Back in 81, Neil Danaher had reached such a level of performance that he was a leading contender for the game's most coveted award, the Brownlow Medal. Naturally, Brownlow's are the last thing in his mind in 1985. But what are his football goals? With the body the way it's in, you, uh, you, can't, you can't make too many long-term goals. Like, uh, I still play, run on the ground, and in the back of your mind you say, well, is this the last time you're going to run on? You just can't help feeling that sometimes. And in a way, in a way that's good because you, uh, you know, I think you play a little bit harder, and, uh, and you, whereas other players, I think they seem to think they can play forever, like the, the 22 or 23, and, uh, and that's the case when I was 22 or 23. I said, oh, isn't this game great? You know, we play, go out and play footy, and I'll be back on next week. But... Uh, it's not the case now, like if I, uh, if I don't walk off tomorrow then you know it might be all over. So uh, I just, you know, my uh, goals are to stay in the side, I've just got in, I want to play well, stay in the side and uh, see what happens uh, come September.
Do you think you might be able to play as well as you were playing? Oh, who knows? Who knows? Hope so.